happened. It happened. Oh, exactly what I wanted to happen. I'm so glad they did that. Oh, final episode of RE0, number 25. Oh, I can't wait for the second season. Oh, please don't take so long. Please, I want to read the fucking light novel, but I can't find any translations. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right, so this episode starts off with Emilia riding with the children, and then we get a little like, oh, we get Wilhelm looking at Emilia, and he like recognizes, oh, you and Subaru have the same eyes. Uh, there's no doubt there's like a master and servant kind of bond between them, maybe even more. And then <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny how Wilhelm, like, uh, Emilia's like, oh, thanks, and she's about to say something to Wilhelm, and then he walks off, he's like, huh? <laughs> I'm like, okay, like a boss, he just walks off. All right, anyway, we get to the fight between Betelidris, Roman Conti, and Julius, and Subaru, and man, that fight was awesome. You know with how Subaru that Julius is fucked, man, because those hands are way too powerful. They get even a little hand on you, and you're like, your body starts to crumble, though. Like, it just breaks under. That They're that powerful. So without the two-man combo, Betelus should probably own them. Julius is pretty damn impressive, man. He's slicing and dicing. The animation was pretty damn cool. Uh, Betelus, Juice, man, I felt bad. It, it really felt like it was a downfall of Bachelor Juice in this episode and it all started off with here with him losing his mind and saying how it's impossible like who are you guys like these hands are like he can't grab the hands how are you able to have this kind of power that Subaru is able to see his hands or like the kind of combination that they're putting together and so Julius goes for the finishing blow and then uh, it looks like uh, Bachelor Juice is finished or like he's down really hurt and then Subaru tells Bachelor Juice I mean uh, tells Julius to to, to, to get rid of the power or, or whatever power they were using that combined them together. And then that's when Betula Juice comes and overtakes his body. And I'm like, I love the part that came up next. So that was huge. A couple episodes or a couple videos back, I wanted to see what would it be like for Betula Juice from his point of view of being inside Subaru's body. And that's exactly what we got to see. So Subaru, he allows him, I, he was planning for this, right? And so he's like, oh, he's fighting off Betel Idris at first, but then he says, I can come back to death. And then, then it shows the scene of Betel Idris inside of Subaru's body. And he looks and he starts crying. I felt so bad for Betel Idris throughout this episode. He's like, he sees the witch, man. We see the witch. But she's like, she's all shadow-like. You know, she looks like the hands and she has the shape of Emilia. She looks all, like, we already knew she looked like Emilia, but... It looks like like as if her spirit like belonged to Milia at some point because the shape is like pretty damn close. And you see the hands are about to reach out to Belgius. He's all like, oh my god. As if like a person has seen God for the first time. That's how he sees this woman or and that's how he sees the witch. But then she says, she says, no, it's not you. And he's like, huh? And he gets thrown out of there. And I'm like, oh man, I felt bad for Belgius because he just, he lost it at that point. And then, right then, that's when uh, they pretty much finish off Bet of the Juice. Or it looks like his body's just completely destroyed, man, with uh, with Julius and Subaru, man. Now, when they get done with Bet of the Juice, uh, it, it doesn't really end there. Apparently, uh, something to do with, like, the rocks, the rock, the explosive rocks that the witches, witches use. Someone apparently had put them in one of the carriages. And I, we don't know who someone did that. They don't really go into detail with that. You kind of have to concentrate with that. So everyone's kind of like freaking out. Like, oh shit, how do we get there? They're so far away now. So then uh, Subaru decides to go with Otto. And they take shortcuts, man. And they're going down the hills, the cliffs. I'm like, oh shit, man. Like, if, if fucking Subaru dies just on this part, just for him going down the cliffs, I'm going to be pissed, man. That's a troll. But that didn't happen. So they're going and going. And then you get some dialogue throughout this episode between Emilia and Puck, you know, I kind of miss Puck with her you know, nice soft voice of her sounding like a monster. But you get some talking and I think she starts to figure out that Subaru is the one that's behind the army. And she's wondering, oh, why would they go so, f why would he go so far? And I don't think she kind of, she doesn't really like come to the conclusion that Subaru's probably in love with her, but I think she might, she probably figures it out right there. Of course, things are confirmed later on, but she, you know, the dialogue between her and Puck you know, Puck's like, oh, it makes sense on why Subaru would be doing this because I think Puck understands how much Subaru cares for her. I wonder if Puck knows that the witch is inside Subaru's butt, though, man. I mean, like, what's the history behind this? Fuck, I want to know so bad, man. The pacing for this episode was pretty damn 
Good, man. I'm like, I feel like so much has happened already. I'm like, I'm only halfway through the episode. I'm like, fuck, man. Come on, come on, come on. But for me, the highlight for this episode was already the witch kicking out Betelouch. But then it gets even better when he's going on the carriage and you see freaking Betelouch just coming and he looks like this monster centipede type made out of the shadows and his body's all messed up and destroyed. And he's nuts. He's, he's lost it completely, man. Like, he's gone insane, he's like, and then, he's like, Subaru, like, give it to me, give it to me, like, he's like, complete jealous of Subaru at this point right here, he starts going nuts, and Subaru's like, hey, give it up already, the witch doesn't love you or me, and then, here's the thing that gets interesting with this dialogue, is that you get Betelouch, Betelouch saying, oh, Satala, 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 he starts to refer to her as Satala, instead of just the witch, so that's, that's more of like, a less formal and more of a personal way to address someone. And he starts saying, oh, you think I could just give up after all I've done for you? The things that you've done for me, even though if you don't remember them, he says as if Satala has done things for Betelgeuse in the past, but she might not remember them. Now, I've always wondered if Betelgeuse really is Sloth, and I guess he is the sin of Sloth. He uses the Archbishop for Sloth, but I always wondered if Sloth was like an actual sin itself, like he had his own character, and then maybe, I always thought maybe Betula just, just took on part of his power, or like maybe he worships Sloth, or like, I always thought that, I was like wondering if he's actually Sloth, Sloth because you have the whale, who's an animal, and he's gluttony, but then you have Betula Juice, who's like a spirit slash person with hands, and he's Sloth, so I was kind of wondering how, what kind of creatures or people are these when it comes to the sins, you know, like gluttony, Sloth, Envy, we know Envy's the witch, so, but it seems to me like Betula Juice is like really hurt bad that Satala rejected him as if they had had a past friendship. I'm like, this can't be the end of Betula Juice or Sloth in general. Like, we need more backstory with this, man. Like, did Satala do something good for Betula Juice in the past or did she do something well for the sin of Sloth? Because, man, I feel bad for bad. Betula Juice, like, was all heartbroken. He's like, how can you betray me like this? Everything I've done for you. And Satala, it just, it seems to me that she loves Subaru over, over this guy. And then Subaru, he's like, get out of here, man. And he's like trying to push him off and he does the final blow. Like, he throw, he, no, he's about to throw the book. And then he reaches for it, but then then Subaru catches it, but then he writes his name down and he says, you're finished, like fucking death note. But as soon as he does that, Betula Juice's spirit, everything dies. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Did Subaru do that himself? Or was that like, I gotta watch that episode again. Did that coincidentally happen right then and there when he said, you're finished? Was that Subaru's command or the witch's command or the fact that he wrote in the book? I'm like, fuck, that felt like death note, man. What the heck? I gotta watch that again, man, but I don't know if that is some kind of power that Subaru has. I hope that's not, that's kind of hacks. That he wrote down, he wrote down saying you're finished in the witch's book, and then that's when he died. Oh, man, I need more, I need more, ugh, I need more. So we get to the part where Subaru catches up to uh, Emilia, yada yada, he gets the rocks out of, I don't know who put the rocks in there, man. Someone's behind the closed doors, someone's trying to betray them. We get a whole bunch of witch cult, witch members still fighting them. He grabs the the rocks and Emilia's like, oh, why would you do this? And he's like, oh, because I love you, like a badass. And he goes off. And we get the background music of uh, of Emilia singing, you know, the ending ending to the RE0. And it's pretty nice and awesome, man. He goes off with the dragon. The dragon's fucking awesome, man. I love that dragon. It blows up. Uh, Emilia catches up to Subaru, and then we get a heartfelt from Subaru to Emilia, and she starts crying. And it felt very similar to Rem and Subaru's moment, but except it was switched backwards. Where, like, let's say, um, Rem is Subaru, and then Emilia is Subaru herself. Like, she's receiving the love from him. So it's like a three-way triangle. Rem loves Subaru, Subaru loves Emilia, and Emilia. But Subaru's happy that Rem told him that... She loves him, and then Emilia is extremely happy that Subaru told her that he loves her. And she starts crying, because I don't think anyone's ever really told her that before. Even though we don't know how long, he, what Emilia's backstory is really much. Uh, I want to know more about her, man. Like, her character has so much to be, like, desired. There's only, She's so far just a surface character. What does she want? She wants the nation to be together, and but she's like... 
just the half elf or that's it and she just wants everyone to be equal and all we know is that she gets she's uh people are discriminatory of, of her because of the way she looks that's all we know about her is that she's a nice girl she will fight for people's rights but i need to know more about her go in depth with her i feel like puck knows so much more about Amelia than what is let on and they're sprinkling it little by little about Amelia's character and i want to see more and more now i don't know about you guys but Towards the end of this chapter, I kept looking at the time limit. I'm like, no! And I'm like, I was waiting. I was waiting for a fucking cliffhanger. I'm upset, but I'm kind of glad they didn't do that. I'm upset because I needed something to keep me like, woo. But then it's a cliffhanger, and then there's no more episodes, and then I'm going to be fucking impatient and just killing myself. But I wanted a cliffhanger at the same time. I don't know what I want, man. This episode was pretty awesome. I love the way it ended, man. No cliffhanger, whatever, I just said that. Four out of five, man. I really love this episode. I really love this series, man. Can't wait for the next season. I don't know if I can wait that long. Whatever. Fantard out. <laughs> wait, uh, four out of five? 4.5 out of five. I think I said that. Bye.